So let's continue our discussion on the transfer of energy as a result of heat, as a result of a difference in temperature between two or more systems. So as of now, we spoke about two types of heat processes. So we looked at conduction and convection. Now conduction is essentially a transfer of energy as a result of a difference in temperature that takes place because two solid objects are physically touching one another. On the other hand, convection, which takes place mostly in liquids and gases, is a transfer of energy as a result of a mass movement of molecules and atoms over very large distances. Now, convection and conduction both require the presence of molecules and atoms to take place. In this lecture, we're going to focus on the third type of heat process known as thermal radiation or simply radiation. Now, radiation is the only heat process that does not require a medium. It does not require the presence of molecules and atoms to transfer energy from a hotter region to a cooler region. Now, how exactly does radiation take place? Well, radiation takes place because of a concept known as electromagnetic radiation and electromagnetic waves. Recall that whenever waves propagate, and that concerns any type of waves, those waves carry energy from one location to another location. Now, there are different types of waves. There are mechanical waves and there are non-mechanical waves. Mechanical waves require a medium to propagate. However, there exist waves that do not require a medium, do not require the presence of molecules and atoms to propagate. And these waves are known as electromagnetic waves. So radiation consists of electromagnetic waves such as, for example, light waves and infrared waves. Now, every object to some extent is capable of radiating. So the only time an object does not radiate energy is when that object is at absolute zero. But because absolute zero is essentially unattainable, that implies that every object to some extent radiates energy. So for example, a very common example of an object that radiates energy is the sun. Now, the sun and the earth are separated by empty space. So our space is essentially a vacuum that does not consist of any molecules. So that means convection and conduction between the sun and the earth cannot take place. So because the sun and the earth aren't physically touching, that means conduction cannot take place. And because there is an absence of matter, an absence of molecules, between the sun and the earth, convection also cannot take place. So that means the way that energy uh, gets from the sun to the earth is by the way of radiation or thermal radiation. So there are different types of reactions that take place in the sun that increases the energy of the sun, increasing the temperature, and because the temperature of the sun is greater than the temperature of the earth, heat will take place, and heat will take place in the form of thermal radiation. Now, what is the rate at which energy leaves the sun? In fact, what is the rate at which energy leaves any object? Well, this is explained by the Stefan Boltzmann equation given by the following formula. So the rate of change of our energy, the change in energy divided by the change in time is equal to the product of epsilon, sigma, area, and t to the fourth power. Now, t is simply the temperature of our object given in kelvins. Our A is the surface area of the object that is emitting that radiation. The sigma is simply a universal constant that is known as the Stefan-Boltzmann constant and it's given the following value. 
5.67 times 10 to the negative 8 watts per meter squared multiplied by Kelvin to the fourth power. Now our epsilon is known as the emissivity. So the emissivity of an object is a number that ranges from 0 to 1 and is characteristic of the surface of the object. So basically very dark and black surfaces have an E, have an epsilon close to 1 and radiate heat very well. On the other hand, very shiny and white surfaces have an epsilon close to 0 and that implies that they radiate the heat very poorly. Now, whenever we're thinking about radiation or thermal radiation, we have to remember the following statement. An object that radiates energy well also absorbs well. And an object that radiates energy poorly also absorbs that energy poorly. So for example, if the sun radiates energy very well, that implies that it also absorbs that energy very well. So let's suppose we have the following system. Let's take the following rectangular system, which is at a temperature given by T1. Now everything outside the system is known as the surroundings. And let's suppose the surroundings is at a temperature T2. Now if the temperature T1 is not the same as the temperature T2, if the system and surroundings are not at thermal equilibrium with one another, that implies that heat will take place, radiation will take place, and that means this object will radiate a certain energy given by this equation. But at the same time, any object that radiates energy, that same object also absorbs energy from the surroundings. So that means not only will our object radiate, but it will also absorb energy. Now we define something known as the net rate of radiation as given by the following formula. So the net rate of radiation given by change in Q divided by change in T is equal to epsilon multiplied by sigma multiplied by the surface area of our object multiplied by T1 to the fourth minus T2 to the fourth where T1 is the temperature of our system and T2 is the temperature of the surroundings. Now, of course, when T1 is equal to T2, when the system is in thermal equilibrium with the surroundings, this difference goes to zero and no net rate of radiation takes place. So let's look at the following example in which we're going to utilize this equation. A person cools by radiation. Suppose a person stands in a room with dark walls at a temperature of 18 degrees Celsius. So the temperature of the walls is 18 degrees Celsius. If the emissivity of the skin is about 0.71 and the temperature of the skin is 36 degrees Celsius, calculate the net radiation rate and suppose that the surface area of the person is 1.6 meters squared. So we essentially want to use this equation. So the net rate of radiation is equal to the product of our emissivity, 0.71 our sigma, this constant multiplied by a 1.6 meters squared multiplied by the difference between our temperature. So the temperature has to be given in Kelvins. So that means 36 plus 273 is the temperature of the person's skin. And we raise that to the power of 4. And 18 plus 273 to the fourth is the temperature of the walls in the room raised to the fourth power. So we plug these values into our calculator and we get about 124 joules every single second is radiated by the person.